I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 3 of the GRE Quant Fundamental playlist. Today we're going to learn fractions. All right, fractions are numbers of the form a over b. Now, the number on the top a is known as the numerator and the number below is known as the denominator. Now, you've got two rules when you write fractions. So the first rule is a and b both need to be integers. Now, I've spoken more about integers in part 1 of this playlist. So you might want to go and watch that. Now, when I say a and b have to be integers, what I mean is you can have fractions as five over seven, or minus one by three, or three by four, and stuff like this. You cannot have an a fraction like one point four over two point three, because one point four and two point three are not integers, and thereby this is not a fraction. So, if a and b are integers like this, you can have fractions. And your second rule says that b is not allowed to have a value zero. Right, b is not equal to zero, because when b is equal to zero, right, this fraction becomes a over zero. So if you put any value of a, right, you put five over zero or three over zero, they all tend to infinity, which is not really good. So what we have is this rule, which says that b is not allowed to be zero. You can have a over zero. You can have a is equal to zero. Right, zero over anything, right, your b will be equal to zero anyway. So it's fine. So a can be zero, but b cannot be zero. And both have to be integers. Now, a really cool property about fractions that I personally like is this: if you multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator of a fraction with any integer, the new fraction that you get retains the same value as the old fraction. So, what I'm saying is, if you have a fraction a by b, right, and you take any number, any integer specifically x, and you multiply the numerator with x, and you multiply the denominator with x, right, and you've got this. Now, on the right-hand side, what I've done is I have divided the numerator by x, and I have divided the denominator by x. What it says basically is that all of these are equal. So what I'm saying is, let's take a fraction three by five. Now, if I multiply this by five, the numerator, and I multiply the denominator by five, what will I get? Three fives are fifteen, and five fives are twenty-five. So three by five and fifteen by twenty-five are exactly the same. Similarly, suppose I had eighteen and sixteen, right? Now I'm dividing it by three, and here also I'm dividing it by three, right? So 18 by three is six. Sorry, here let's just take 15 to make it simple. So 15 by three is five. Now 18 by 15 and six by five are exactly the same. This property is very important when you use it in simplification. All right, now suppose you have two fractions. You have a by b and you have c by d, and you're asked to add them. What are you going to do? All right, so now you have two scenarios. One scenario. Is when b and d are equal, right? Now, when b and d are equal, life is easy. So, what do you do? Let's take an example. Say you have three by five, and you have six by five. Right now, a is three, c is six, b is five, d is five. When b and d are equal, that is, the denominators are equal of the two fractions. What you do is you simply write the denominator five, right, and you add. Both the numerators, so three plus six is nine. So your answer is nine by five. Now, in your second scenario, right, when b is not equal to d, this is where you have to do an LCM. So suppose we have three by five plus seven by four. Right now, what you're going to do is you're going to write the denominator as the LCM of five and four. Now, LCM is your least common multiple. If you don't know what an LCM is, you might want to go on to part two of this playlist where I've explained LCM thoroughly. Now, I already know the LCM of five and four is twenty, so I'm going to write that here. Now, what you're going to write here is divide the LCM by five, right? So you're going to divide the LCM by the denominator of the first fraction. So twenty by five is four. Now this number you multiply with the numerator. So here, similarly, twenty by four is five. So take that five and multiply it on the numerator of the second fraction. So five, right? Right. So now what I want to do is three fours are twelve. Plus seven fives are thirty-five. So twelve plus thirty-five is forty-seven. So forty-seven over twenty. So this is how you add two fractions when the denominators are not equal. The same holds good for subtraction. Now let's see how to multiply and divide fractions. Multiplication of fractions is probably the easiest operation in fractions. 
So suppose you have to multiply a by b into c by d. Now what you're going to do is the product of these two fractions will be the separate multiplications of the numerators and the separate multiplications of the denominators. So your product will be a into c divided by b into d. That's it. So let's take an example. If you have 3 by 5 and you want to multiply it by 4 by 7, right? So the answer will be the separate multiplication of the numerators. 3, 4 is 12 and 5 into 7 is 35. So 12 by 35 is your product. For division, it's a little different. Now to divide two fractions, what you do is this. Suppose you have a by b and it is to be divided by c by d. So you know that this is the dividend and this is the divisor. So this will translate to this. If you have to divide two fractions, keep the first fraction as it is, right? And multiply it with the inverse of this fraction. So you multiply it by d by c. So the, the denominator goes to the numerator and the numerator comes to the denominator. So a by b into d by c, it becomes a d, a d divided by b into c, right? So this is the division of a by b and c by d. Now, you've seen fractions of the sort, 3 by 2 by 5 by 7, right? And these used to look very confusing to you first. But what this basically is, is this, right? So it is a by b divided by c by d, right? Now you directly know that this is in fact equal to this. So if you give the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, you know that the fourth one will go to the first and this second one will come down to third. So what you're going to do here is 7 will come on top. So it becomes 3 into 7 divided by 2 comes down to 5. So 2 equal to 5. So 7 3s are 21 and 2 tens, uh, two fives are 10. So this is your answer. So what used to look complicated at one point of time now becomes a few seconds work. Now the final thing to look into are mixed numbers. A mixed number looks something like this. 4, 3 by 4. And I know most of you have seen them. So what you do is the expansion for this is 4 plus 3 by 4. Now, why are they called mixed numbers? They're called mixed numbers because you have two different types of numbers. You have 4, that's an integer, and you have 3 by 4, that's a fraction. So since they're both not the same, you have an integer and a fraction, hence they're known as mixed numbers. Now, the way to find the value of this is the, the conventional method. That's one way. So this is the conventional method. What you do is you split it up into the integer and the fraction. Then you carry out fractional addition, what I spoke about two minutes ago. So 4 can be written as 4 by 1, right? So when the denominator are both different, right? Then what you're going to do? You're going to take an LCM. So an LCM of 4 and 1 is 4. So 4 over 1 is 4. So multiply this by 4. And 4 over 4 is 1. So multiply this by 1. So 4 4s are 16. Plus 3 1s are 3. So this becomes 19 over 4. Right? So the value of 4 3 by 4 is 19 by 4 in a fraction. This is a mixed number. This is a mixed number and it's a fraction. Both of these have the same value. It's just different ways of representing it. Now, this may take some time. These numbers are easy, right? If I give you 15, 3 by 8, right? This might take some time with this method. So what you do is this. Let's say a mixed number is given as A, B by C, right? A generalized way of saying. So the fast way to find out the value, right? Is this. You multiply A and C, all right? So you multiply this, the product, you add it with B. And then the whole answer, the sum, you divide it by C. So the easiest way would be AC plus B divided by C. So if you've got 4, 3 by 4, multiply A and C, 4, 4 is 16, plus B. 16 plus 3 is 19, 19 by 4, so 19 by 4. This is your equivalent value in fractions in one step. All right, so this was part three on fractions. We looked at how to add, subtract, divide, and multiply fractions. And we also looked at what are mixed numbers. In part four, I'll be discussing exponents and roots. If you found these videos helpful, do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I make these videos free of cost and for the benefit of students. So I encourage you to download them and share them as much as you can. I'd also appreciate it if you repost this on Facebook and tell your friends about it. Cheers. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get access to all my videos. I release new lectures every Thursday. Cheers!